Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how to build a simple invoicing system in Mac numbers. Now, a few years ago, I did a video about creating an invoicing system in numbers. It used some fairly complex formulas to grab data from one table and put it in another. This proved to be useful for much more than just invoices. And over the years, I've referred lots of people to that video. But now with numbers 14.4, there's a new and simpler way to do this. So sticking with the same kind of example, here's an invoicing system. We'll start off with one sheet that just has clients. And basically each client is assigned an ID number. So you don't always have to type their name over and over again. And then you've got the name and address. So you could say be a graphic artist working for various people. I know I'm gonna get asked about having multiple lines in the same cell, and that's simply done by holding the option key and pressing return like that. So this is all just manually entered data. Every time a new client is added, a new number is created for them, and then their name and address are added to this table. The real data is in this second sheet here. So I've used this plus button to create a second sheet, and in this consultation sheet, I've got a table here that's gonna keep growing as I do work. Each line has a lot of manually entered data and a couple of functions. So every time a piece of work is done, like eight hours of work for this one client on this particular day, the client number is entered here. So you don't have to type the name and then the date of the work, the number of hours and the rate. You may have different rates for different kinds of work, for instance. And then two columns are generated based on this data. The simplest one is here, the total. And it's just a formula here that is the hours multiplied by the rate. So a really simple formula that saves you the work of having to multiply the numbers yourself and type it in. It's done automatically. And as you enter new rows to this, you can see the formula carries forward and all you need to do is enter these values and the new value for the total would appear here. Also, the name here comes from a formula as well. It's a simple lookup function. If you look here, you can see I just use lookup and then the number here that's in the client column. And then it looks up in the client's table from column A, the number, and then gets as a result, the name. So basically, if I were to change this client number here to seven, you could see how it picks the name from the client's table for client ID seven instead of client ID one. The last column here is also manually entered in, and this is just a date of whenever this bill is paid. So if I were to get a payment in for this client, I would apply it to the total here. And instead of having a checkbox or putting paid or something, it's more useful to put in a date. That way you have a little bit more information about it. But the general idea is if there's a date here, then that amount's been paid. If there's no date here, then that amount is still outstanding. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. So now we come to the invoice. Now you can have an invoice like this and manually enter in all of the data. You can go back to this table here and copy and paste or type in date, hours, rate, total. You can calculate the total on your own. And that might be the old fashioned way to do that. You may even do it in a pages document rather than in a numbers document and then print out a nice invoice or send it as a PDF. But we're gonna use formulas to actually create this automatically. All you need to do is enter in a client ID number and the rest would populate by itself. So as an example here under client, we wanna have the name and their address. This is a simple lookup. We're already looking up the name somewhere else. So we're gonna use a similar thing here. I'm going to press equals to enter in a formula here. And I wanna use a lookup. And I'm gonna look up based on the client ID. I want to then go to the clients table here, look in column A and get the result from column B like that. A very simple lookup. And I could see the result is that the name of the client based on the client ID is there. Same thing for the address. I'll do lookup and then I'll base it on the client ID. Then I wanna go to the clients table and look up from column A and get the result this time from column C to give the address like that. And now I get the address. If I change the client number, it will change the values 
here. Now comes the hard part. Now you want to populate this table. So you want to have a new table that's taking data from this table, but where the client matches and they haven't paid yet. Let's start by focusing on just the client ID. So here on the invoice, I have the client ID number there. Let's go and grab all of the rows here, just the date, hours, rate, and total. And if the client ID matches, let's put them here. So to do this, we're going to use a new function. I'm going to press equals here, and let's look up the function here. The function is one of these new spilling functions that's only available starting with numbers 14.4. So we're going to look for filter, and here it is. I'm going to select it, and you should definitely read about it here before using it. I'm going to double click it, and it's going to put it in here. There's the template. Now, first, I want to get an array, the whole array of what it is we want data returned from. So that's going to be from the consultations table. And it's not going to be this entire table. It's only these four columns. So I'm going to click in C at the top here and drag over to F. And it's going to give me consultations from column C to column F. Now, what do I want to test? Well, remember, I'm testing the client ID. So it's column A. And what sort of test do I want to do? Well, I'm going to see if it's equal to, and then I want to go back to the invoice here and equal to this value, the client ID. So this table, A1, just like that. So if column A matches A1, in this case 7, it's going to take the rows from here. If empty, we'll give a value to use if it can't find any at all. I'm just going to use two quotes there to represent blank. Don't put anything. Now I'm going to click the button right there, and I get my result. It picks out the five rows here, the date, hours, rate, and total from the consultations. So if I compare all the number sevens here, like this row and this row and these three rows here, that's what I'm seeing now on the invoice. There's only a formula in A2 right here. You can see the formula. And at the bottom, it indicates that it's actually spilling from A2 to D6, this entire area. If I click on one of these cells, it'll tell me that it's using this formula, which is in A2, to populate itself. So there's really nothing in any of these cells except this first one. And this first one is pushing everything here. Problems you may have here is if you don't have enough columns to fit the results, or you don't have enough rows, it's going to give you an error. So that's why I've included 15 rows. You may want to include 30 rows if you think that's a possibility. And you want to make sure the number of columns matches. So I've got the results here, but unfortunately, it's still falling short because the first row here, if I look, is actually paid. It's got a date here. So I want to add an additional criterion to this. I'm going to go back to the formula. And the way I compare with two things here is not as you would think using and, but instead multiplying them. This is going to return a true or false. I want to have a second true or false. Multiplying them together basically means they both have to be true for it to be true. Like one times one is one, but one times zero or zero times one, that's a zero. So I'm going to surround this with parentheses and multiply, and that's just shift eight to get an asterisk there. And then I want to have a second criterion right here, this one is going to be simply is blank, a simple test. And then I want to make sure I have the right number of parentheses on the right. It kind of auto corrects and eliminates one by accident, but you want to make sure your parentheses match here. So what is blank? Well, whether the paid column is blank. So G. So is blank consultations G, and that's multiplied by if consultations A matches the client ID. So if the client ID is seven and the paid column is blank, the row will be shown. And sure enough, if I do this now, I see only four rows here. And these four rows will match the four rows here where the client is number seven and there's nothing in the paid columns. In other words, this row and these three rows right here or what I'll now find here. If I simply change the client ID to say five, it will recalculate everything and give me just two rows. 
Looking here, I can see there's client five, but this is paid. There's another client five not paid, another client five not paid. Those are the two rows that are now included here. And all done with this one formula in this one cell that populates the whole table. Let's finish this off by having a footer row here. I've simply gone to format table and I've set one footer row. So the footer row isn't part of all the calculations for the column. So I can just do things like having sum of the entire column B. That'll give me the sum of the hours. I can do the same thing here, equals sum of, and I click up here, D. So give me the sum of all of the amounts right here. I get the total. I want the total due to also be here. So I'll just simply refer to this cell. So a simple formula that just basically says, give me the value that's shown in that blast cell at the bottom right corner there. So now I have my total. Let's go to text here and make this bold. So now I've got nice bold amount there. All I need to do now is put the client ID here and it instantly fills in the name, the address, puts only the rows that are due for that client, calculates the total and adds the total right here. I can go one step further and get rid of these blank rows pretty easily by selecting this table and going to organize, filter, and then add a filter. And I could choose any one of the columns. I'll just choose date since it's the first one and say, I want the rule to be if the cell is not blank. And you could see it now has rows one, two, three, four, five, skips the rest of the rows until a footer cell because they are blank. If I were to change this to client five, there's only two rows now that aren't blank. So this table now will expand or shrink based on how many rows are not blank. I can add other text boxes like that with terms and conditions and address to send the check to and all of that uh, if I want and you know do a simple print now to print that sheet. And just to show you how easy it is to use filter for other things, I've created another sheet here. And basically I just want kind of a monthly view to see how much work I've done in a given month. I put a simple table up here that's going to have year dash month. So 2025-3 for March 2025. And the formula here that's only in this cell is to basically take the entire contents of consultation. So everything here, and then take the year of the date column, append a little dash, and then also append the month from the same date column. In other words, for here, this would be 2025 dash two. And then is that equal to the value right here? And then put a blank here for if it's empty. And now it will populate this table here with values that match this. So if I change this, for instance, to two, you could see I've got just the February ones. If I change it to four, I've got just the April ones. And I could do calculations on this, like maybe have a footer column here that has the total number of hours and the total amount billed and all of that. So numbers now includes a lot of these new spilling functions, but just mastering the filter function alone gives you a lot of power. You can download this number spreadsheet if you like from this post at macmost.com. I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.